Yeah, it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is Thursday, May 30th, 2019. Gotta give a shout out to Sir GR for that song request today. Oh man, this is a classic. I almost forgot about this song. Little Boosie featuring Young Jeezy. Better believe it. A big classic song right there, guys. Man, that takes me back. I'm definitely adding that to my playlist today. Thanks, Sarji, for that song request again. What's good, people? Hope you guys are doing well, and welcome to another episode. I want to first give a shout out to my channel sponsors, Moon Lambo Tees. Save 25% off if you guys want to shop over there. Use Crypto Blood 25 for that. And also SmartCash.cc, instant payments, faster than Visa and MasterCard, no processing fees. Check them out as well. They've been kind of suppressed in this run up so it may be one of the coins left to kind of you know see a bump in this bull run that we've seen and if you guys are interested in advertising on the channel there's one slot left you can do 15 30 and 60 episode packages so contact me at ads at cryptoblood.io so all that out the way and today we're going to look at an announcement from coinbase they've added eos it's how, uh, how fitting that they added two days before the June 1st announcement. But hey, it's there. Those that use Coinbase can now purchase EOS directly. Might want to get you some before this announcement. You should have been getting you some for a while, but that's another story. <laughs> Second article is going to be about Barclays and another firm going in on a syndicate round for a blockchain startup called Crowds. Crowds is uh, going to be entering the invoice factoring game. This is going to put some heat under PPT and PayPi. Though PayPi, I think they were doing a little bit more than invoice factoring, but it's definitely going to put a lot of heat under the existing companies in this industry. We'll talk about that. I'll give you my two Satoshis on that. And then lastly, a Chinese citizen has now claimed copyright for the Bitcoin white paper. So we've got a second hat in the pot for this whole Bitcoin white paper copyright. I don't know why and how you copyright a decentralized technology, but hey, whatever. <laughs> whatever floats your boat, you go ahead and do that. So we're going to take a look at all three of those here shortly. But first, let's take a look at this huge move that we attempted at the 9,000 marker for Bitcoin. And it actually slammed down. And to me, guys, this right here, and I told my trading people today, we got tapped out of the long position unfortunately we were long so what you want to understand in this scenario even though we had a nice move up this is concerning to me on the one hour chart at least this is a bearish engulfing candle so it fully engulfs this bull candle here and that's a very strong bearish move in my opinion so i went ahead and took some profits off took 30 percent off into uh usdc and we'll wait for a correction here uh, if we see one, if not, hey, I'll get back in. I mean, I'll lose. If if it goes up above 10,000, I'll still probably wait and just kind of see what happens. But I'm comfortable taking profits here. It's been a long ride all the way up. I've been telling people, and I was talking to someone in the web bot room this morning. I've been telling people that 3,000 was the low all the way back in 2018. So I've been accumulating at 3600 i think i bought some and i accumulated more at 3800 3900 in that range but i've been saying that 3k was a low was a floor for us just simply looking at previous uh technical analysis and price action on that that area it's very strong price action to the upside off the 3k marker so i've more than doubled the money purchased at those levels so it's time to take some profits here people and that's exactly what I did earlier today. Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to take profit at the uh, high area, but you, you never can time the tops, guys. I try to tell you that it's, it's a ghost you'll never catch. Sometimes you'll get lucky, but most times you won't time tops. So I was able to get um, as far as in Bitcoin's price at, the, at that time, around 87.40, 87.50. I was able to get... Uh, take some profits on some altcoins and we'll just see what happens from here though we are looking like we're 
toting that line there we're, we're really close to that trend line that i have drawn and as you see we did do a, a nice strong bounce off of that trend line there but my assumption to be honest with you is that we're gonna we're gonna do this we're gonna go ahead i'm gonna extend this line out that i had drawn i can see us coming back down to this area here talking about 7800 somewhere around there so maybe i'll start loading in there and uh see what happens from there if, it, if we break this area then we're heading lower maybe back to 6k that should be definitely a new floor for us though for sure i'm very confident in 6k being a floor for the bitcoin market and then subsequently that will relate uh, how it does into the altcoins. So the quick pick is just going to be an announcement about Coinbase adding EOS to their platform. You can now buy EOS directly. You know, Coinbase doesn't have that effect any longer in the markets, but it still uh, opens up EOS to a big audience in the U.S., which can only be uh, of benefit for the EOS community. So I wanted to let you guys know that EOS is now on Coinbase. You may have to refresh or update your app on your Android or iOS, but you're now able to send, receive, convert, buy and sell and store EOS on Coinbase. This is a very strong move long-term for EOS being added to Coinbase. And I hope you guys checked out the kicking it session I did with one of the top block producers in the EOS community. And that's Kevin Rose and his team, EOS New York. If you didn't get a chance to check it out, make sure you do. Had an awesome time with him yesterday talking about EOS and all the exciting things going on. If you still haven't looked into this community, this technology, you really should. DPoS is a game changer when it comes to blockchain technology, especially when dealing with dApps. I'm most excited about dApps and gaming with EOS. That's where EOS is going to be huge in my opinion. And definitely check out the interview I did with Kevin Rose yesterday. Still can't believe that Cliff High said that EOS would be dead by 2018. Ah man, I'm telling you guys, this is this is one that's going to be here to stay for sure. But anyhow, we've got the first article out of Coin Telegraph and it's about a Chinese citizen claiming the US copyright for Bitcoin's white paper. <laughs> Official United States Copyright Archive data shows that we Lu, I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly, a Chinese citizen residing in California claimed copyright to Bitcoin's white paper on May 24th. In the filing, Lu claims to have published the Bitcoin white paper on January 11, 2008 under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto with the title Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Earlier this month, self-proclaimed Satoshi Craig Wright also filed U.S. copyright registrations for the same paper and most of the original code used to build Bitcoin. Cointelegraph has not been able to determine who Lou is or the reasoning behind the filing the copyright claim by press time. A news release from May 21st had claimed the U.S. officials received confirmation that Wright is actually Satoshi Nakamoto, but the news has been met with skepticism from some crypto commentators. Earlier this month, Cointelegraph reported that the legal validity of Wright's copyright filings are an object of dispute. Entrepreneur and Bitcoin core developer Jimmy Song told Cointelegraph that instead of proving that he is Satoshi, the following shows that CWS is a publicly seeking con man, but we already knew that. Yes, yeah, it's just very true, Jimmy Song. Very true. The U.S. Copyright Office had responded on May 22nd to the clamor over Wright's new claim by releasing a press statement noting that as a general rule, when the Copyright Office receives an application for registration, the claimant certifies as to the truth of the statements made in the submitted materials. The author of the release concluded the Copyright Office does not investigate the truth of any statement made. There you have it. We'll have to see what happens with this whole thing. It really doesn't matter what happens, to be honest with you. The code is open source. It's used by millions and millions of people around the world. It doesn't matter who claims the white paper. He can't, he can't stop anyone from using the open source code and no one really cares who uh, who claims or has ownership over the actual white paper, even though we know he doesn't and didn't write it. 
was he around then he was definitely an early bitcoin uh investor but that does not make you satoshi nakamoto second article comes out of coin telegraph as well this is crazy i actually have to give a shout out to manly stanley in the web by rooms for this one barclays leads 5.5 million dollar funding round for blockchain based invoice system and their name is crowds with a Z. It says here the United Kingdom based international bank Barclays and technology investment firm Bold Capital Partners have led a round of 5.5 million in funding for fintech firm Crowd's blockchain based global invoice exchange, according to a press release on May 28th. According to the report, the blockchain based technology will purportedly make invoice processing more efficient by digitizing and automatizing what are traditionally manual processes. The technology also automates the process of finding financers and sending them invoices. CEO of Crowds, Payson E. Johnston, emphasizes the importance that this speedier invoicing processing has for small and mid-sized enterprises. He said today, small and mid-sized businesses often have to wait for a financially crushing 90 days to 120 days or more to get paid. It's no wonder that more than half of them suffer from cash flow problems during any given year. However, with the crowds invoicing exchange system, these often struggling companies can get paid with a few days or less at rates usually far less than available elsewhere in the markets. In addition to receiving investment from Barclays and Bold, the $5.5 million funding round was also financed by TFX Capital Partners, Techstars Ventures, oh wow, Techstars Ventures, and First Derivatives. The financial backing will purportedly go to product development, marketing sales, and hiring for crowds. Wow, there you have it. And to be honest with you, $5.5 million is a huge round uh, for, for backing, for out the gate. I don't know if they, with Techstars, I'm not sure if they went through Techstars program, we went through Techstars mobility program. My partner and I was one of our first startups. You know, they do take a position in, in the company. Um, but I'm not sure if they actually went through it or if Techstars was just investing in their round. But this is uh, 5.5 million is a lot and will be sufficient enough for them for sure. Seeing that they're teamed up with Barclays, that's going to open them up very quickly to scale. And you know, I don't think they have a token because there is no need for a token. Unfortunately, we probably won't as crypto enthusiasts won't be able to kind of uh, take advantage of this move. But this is a good one. This is definitely a good one. And someone in the room, in the web our room, made mention that, you know, this is uh, good news for PPT because it, it validates the industry. It definitely is good news that it validates the industry for sure. But it is not necessarily good news for competitors because of who crowds teamed up with. They're going to be able to scale and take market share. They're going to be the ones that actually have first movers advantage because they're going to be the ones that hit the markets first, like truly hit the markets first. So they're going to have first movers advantage. And again, unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be a way for crypto investors like us to take advantage of this uh, other than lending our, our capital possibly. You guys let me know, is this uh, good or bad for PPT, for PayPi, for any other? I haven't heard of any other. There, there was another one. I can't remember the name of the other company that was doing something similar to uh, what PPT and PayPi were, were doing. Is it Hive or something like that? Is this good or bad for them in the uh, in the long run? Let me know your comments about that in the section below. But that's pretty much it again, ladies and gents. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of My Two Satoshis. Again, shout out to MoonLamboTees.com and SmartCash.cc. And I got to give some more love to my man for the song request today. Lil Boosie. You better believe it, featuring Young Jeezy and Webby, actually, too. <laughs> Forgot about Webby. He's a character. I'm out of here, people. That's my two Satoshis. Make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe to support this channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Holla!